married life. Married life, which is coming later on in the surah. Allah put this desire inside the human being and the only way you can fulfill that desire is through proper nikah. That's the only way. Married life is supposed to be the fulfillment of your desires. The desires of the male and the desires of the female. You know what happens in Muslim society sometimes? We are so scared of desire because desire is always Hollywood, desire is Bollywood, desire is pornography, desire is dirty fashion industry, desire is Victoria's Secret, desire is this, that, the other. This stuff is desire. It's all evil. So we start thinking in our heads, in our minds, that desire itself is what? Evil. And then the husband and the wife, the more religious they get, the less they fulfill each other's desires in their private life. So the relig becoming religious means you don't take care of each other's desires because desires are astaghfirullah. Desires are not astaghfirullah. Desires are alhamdulillah. They are. And if you don't take care of those desires inside the marriage, both of you, for each other, then shaitan will come and because, look, the desire is there, the flood has already come, if you stop the water this way, it will go some other way. You cannot pretend the water doesn't exist. The purpose of a dam is to guide the water in the right direction. If you block it completely, then it will find another way. Men will not stop thinking about women. If the wife comes and says, Hey, you think that woman's beautiful over there? Every man will say, No. No, what is this is ugly. Ugh, too, too. You know? But you know what? Instead of you worrying about what he thinks about that woman, you should be so obsessed with making, you should make yourself his drug. He should be obsessed with you. He should be obsessed with you. He can't think of desire unless he thinks of you. He can't even think of it. That's your mission. Your mission is she can't think of good looking, handsome, loving, caring. She can't even think of those words without thinking of you. Our marriages are so ugly most of the time. So ugly. There is no love. There is no compassion. There is no desire. There is no romance. There is nothing. There is just, uh, well, you go to your halaqa, I'm going to my halaqa. When you do that, you are ruining that, temp that temptation that you have inside. You're not going to be able to channel it in the right way. You are going to, the wife is going to think, oh, I wish I married someone who actually loved me. I wish I was with this one or that one or the other. The thoughts will come. And the thoughts will come to the husband too. And the more those thoughts come, the more dissatisfied you are with your spouse. The more dissatisfied you become. Young people think when they get married, all the fitna will end. All the evil thoughts will go away. All the imagination will stop. Inshallah, everything is going to be great. The married men look at them and go, <laughs> You know? But Allah gave us that halal option. He gave us that alternative. And He gave it for a reason. By, by the way, guys, I know this sounds adult, and I know children are here, but Surah An Nur, you should have known better. You know? The word for intimacy, intercourse, and the word for marriage is the same word in Arabic. The same word in Arabic. It's the same word in the Quran. Didn't I just show it to you? This is not some small part of marriage. This is at the heart of what marriage is. Like the Prophet himself would say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, until you taste his honey, until she tastes your honey. This is not, this is, we're not, I'm not trying to be shameless here, but I'm trying to help you understand. Allah put this desire in us, and that desire should be fulfilled to your satisfaction within marriage. Because if it's not, 
two years, if, it, if you're not satisfied and happy in your marriage, then it's going to start messing you up. It's, it's going to start messing you up. And it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for her. And you know what the biggest damage will be? The biggest damage will be to your iman. The biggest, because this subject is there to protect what? Iman. That's what it's there for. Your spiritual life will be damaged. You won't be able to concentrate. You won't be able to think properly because these unmet desires are going to eat away at you. It's a serious subject, people. This is a very serious subject. And we have to educate, you know, especially our young people, especially, you know, in a traditional society, it's difficult to talk to our boys and girls about this subject. Especially if you come from a, in a traditional family, a lot of times our girls don't even know what they're getting into when they're getting married. They have no idea. They just thought boys are evil. And all of a sudden they married to this guy. And this guy has held himself back. He's like this lion in a cage. You know, and they got married and now finally the cage is open. And that girl is like a sheep. She had no idea there's such a thing as a lion. And, and so for him, it's just this flood of hormones and desires that he's been holding back all this time. And finally, there's a juicy sheep right in front of him. And on the other hand, there's this girl who was mentally completely unprepared. She had no idea what's coming and they're traumatized. They're absolutely traumatized. Because we tried to protect them too much. You know? They're, in our deen, you, some things you're supposed to have an education about, you should know what you're getting into. It's good for you. You should know about it. You know? But of course, now the other extreme is we know a little too much. <laughs> you know? And people's idea of what desires are is corrupted by pornography and disgusting film and all this stuff and they want to bring those things into their married life. No. No. Th these people are, they, they are animals to begin with. We don't take uh, education from animals. There's a statistic done in the United States and England, a vast majority of teenagers learn about intimacy, about intercourse through pornography. And compare that to other statistics. 80% of pornography is violent. 80% of it. So what are these kids learning? SubhanAllah. They're learning to turn into not human beings but animals. This is an act of love. This is an act of rahmah between two people. They're closer than they've ever been. These people, قَدْ أَفْضَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ The way Allah talks about it is so beautiful. Allah says, you have poured into each other. You have got, you have shared everything about yuhunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahunna. They are your clothing, you are their clothing. Clothing is never something that hurts you. Clothing is something that comforts you. Comfort, clothing is something that beautifies you. Clothing is something that feels good. You know, subhanallah. Clothing is closer to you than anything else. If clothing is painful, you don't want it, it's uncomfortable. But these, unfortunately, people are now watching this filth and it's corrupting their minds. And they're doing these things and they're demanding these things. That's not what I'm talking about. We have to go back to the fitrah. We have to teach that mercy again. And there's a respectful way of teaching it. You don't have to get explicit. There's a respectful way of teaching it. But that education is necessary, especially for young men and women that are about to be married.